Hi, Nadir from CNE TV. So my first question... Could I trouble you since you are speaking? Yes. You can remove your mask because it still sounds a little muffled to me. Okay, how about now? Is it okay? Better? Yeah. Okay, uh, my first question will be on the funding model itself, the non-profit model. Uh, what exactly is this funding model? How will you get funds and sustain moving forward? And my second question, how will this impact SPH in terms of jobs and reorganization? Will there be any rich cuts? Will there be any retrenchments, for example? What's the second part again? The second part will be how it will impact the current media business in SPH. Will there be any kind of retrenchments or wage cuts affecting the staff? Okay, okay. Uh, first point, what is the funding model? Second point, any retrenchments? Yeah, and my first point is also, uh, I'm asking how will SBH Media actually get the funds? Lah? Okay, thank you. I think that's a very valid question. What is the funding model going forward? Uh, as I said in my statement, uh, we intend to uh, incorporate, a, first step, incorporate a wholly owned uh, whole coal to hold all our media assets. Yeah? And uh, subsequently, to inject this whole coal into a company limited by a guarantee uh, for a nominal sum, of course, subject to shareholders' approval. So what is the funding model? The funding model is, as I also stated in my uh, uh, opening remarks, that SPH will transfer across to this uh, newly incorporated whole co uh, all our media assets, including the leasehold properties like new centre where we are currently located, our print centre, uh, our digital investment assets, uh, and our intellectual property rights, uh, including all the titles to our publication. Uh, and on top of that, we will also be capitalizing this new HOCO with uh, $80 million in cash and $30 million in the form of SPH shares and SPH REIT unit. Uh, this is on the basis of uh, enabling the HOCO post-injection to the CLG to have a reasonable runway to uh, take off into its new chapter under the not-for-profit CLG. Uh, it could, we expect this uh, injection of uh, capital to give it the uh, time for the next three to four years maybe, depending on circumstances, to reach a, a safe landing in terms of a long-term sustainable funding model which will involve public-private partnership. Hmm? As a non-profit organization, obviously, uh, it would be able to source additional public uh, contribution, which is not able to, which SPH Media is not able to do while it is part of a listed company. It is also uh, possible to, for the CLG to receive additional financial support from the government to help it to achieve its mission as a public information provider for Singapore. So that would ensure that it would have a sustainable financial uh, model for the future. On the other part of... Oh, sorry, uh, how long will the transfer to the CLG process, the whole entire process, how long is it expected to take? I'm having problems. So how long will this long transfer to the CLG? Oh, you're on the timeline. Yeah. Okay, I think after today, we will prepare a submission to SGX, you know, our draft circular to shareholders. And uh, once we obtain SGX approval for the draft circular, we believe that we will be able to, uh, somewhere around mid-June, send out circulars to our shareholders together with a, a notice for an EGM. Uh, we envisage calling the EGM sometime early in July. And uh, if we obtain shareholders' approval for this restructuring at that EGM, then the final stage of the restructuring will be carried out. We expect to be able to close the restructuring uh, by October, 
maybe a little bit earlier because there are always some uncertainty along the way what has to be done to achieve final closure. But so I'll say around October. Yeah. And, and your second start? part. Sorry, your yeah. second part. I've not forgotten. I'm coming to that. Uh, the intention is to transfer all of SPH media's you know, physical assets, financial assets, and the people in our newsroom, in our sales division, in our backroom support, in our IT, which is a very critical part of SPH media, entirely over to the new whole core and subsequently injected uh, to be part of the CLG. Uh, everyone who is here will be transferred over. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, and with the restructuring, does it also mean okay. there will be... Yes, a yes, yes. I think the details of the uh, transaction timeline is, uh, I think, is contained in one of the pages in your uh, investment relation deck, all right, which yeah. I think you have uh, before you, all right, and it's in uh, SGS Next. All right, I think, uh, Chairman, I think there's a specific, there's a specific question about uh, uh, retrenchment, all right, and, and I would say the, 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 we have already said that there's no longer a further scope uh, in cost cuts without furring, uh, uh, without uh, uh, impairing the the journalistic uh, the quality of journalism that SPH uh, Media provides, uh. all right. And then the whole exercise is actually is, is not is to make sure that we can preserve the fine bowl of China, as Chairman has uh, has indicated. All right. So the purpose behind this is, is the intention is not to 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 do any anything that will further. They will, they will impair all right, the, the ability of SPH Media to continue providing quality journalism. Okay, so I think maybe we can have a question, uh, answers to other, other, other members here. Yeah. Yeah, please. Other questions? Thank you. Please, please, give others a chance. Uh, hi, Bo Leong from Zaobao. Uh, just to check, uh, how would this restructuring exercise affect uh, shareholders, uh, particularly in terms of uh, what are the benefits to bring to the shareholders, also like some of the risk may involve uh, for shareholders. I think that's a, another valid question, obviously. Um, shareholders' expectation from the listed company, obviously, is to have a, a reasonable or fair financial return, and they want to have a regular dividends, handsome dividends if possible. Uh, to have uh, SPH Media, continue to be part of this uh, listed company is likely to uh, mean that uh, the financial performance of SPH Group will be adversely impacted because both revenue and profit from the media business is expected to continue to decline. Uh, so shareholders will be adversely impacted, you know, under the current arrangement. Once you have this uh, restructuring concluded, then we believe that shareholders can see better value from the rest of SPH. And apart from that, the lifting of the Newspaper Printing Presses Act conditions that are imposed on SPH in terms of shareholding structures, uh, uh, in terms of uh, other you know, uh, requirements, uh, like for instance, having to issue a management share for every new share that you issue, uh, all that will be lifted. You know? The Ministry of Communication and Information said that they will lift all those uh, requirements on the remaining SPH non-media business. It makes, it makes sense because it's no longer a media company, so why the need to impose those uh, constraints or, or restrictions, which means that the LISCO will now be uh, able to restructure its capital and its shareholding in such a way as to better optimize what it can do, seek out a new uh, business opportunity, explore ways of further unlocking values for shareholders and uh, providing them with a better return over the, uh, in the following years, you see. I hope that addressed the point that you raised. Okay. Yes, I thank you. 
Hi, Nora Heiser from Berita Harian. Can I know what is the, um, who will manage the CLG? And if um, after three to four years, you see the need for SPH to actually inject more funds, would you uh, be able to do so? Thank you. Can you? Yeah, so who will manage CLG? And then uh, three to four years later, will we be injecting more funds if that's not mm. enough? I take the second part first, okay? Uh, Will we be injecting more funds into the CLG in future? Uh, that is not the intention. This is a restructuring process whereby SPH Media will be transferred over to the CLG and they will then uh, strike out on their own together with the capitalization that we have provided. Uh, we, there's no undertaking, there's no commitment to continue to fund the CLG uh, from SPH. But of course, as I said in my statement, uh, if the remaining SPH, you know, uh, and we expect the remaining SPH to be successful, and it's really up to the company then at that right time to consider whether they want to make a public spirited contribution to the not-for-profit foundation or the CLG. That is to be decided only in the future. There is no commitment as of now. Okay? So, uh, the commitment is what we have stated in our, what I've just stated earlier on. Okay, what the, the first one is who is managing the CLG? Who is managing the CLG? The CLG, uh, which is yet to be formed, uh, will be formed in due course. And uh, who will be uh, responsible for the CLG and uh, you know, uh, running the CLG will be uh, announced at the later stage. Yes. Sorry, actually, this lady in front was ahead just now. No, no, they're, they're in blue, in blue. You, yeah. huh? yes. Sorry, she she was had her hands up. Sorry, I will come back to you. Okay, please speak up when you use the mic. Please speak up. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Thank you. This is Janice. Sorry, the mic is a bit high. Yeah. Um. From today. Yeah. I have a question about the funding of the CLG. Um. Mr. Lee, can you hear me? Can, yes, have, please yes. pick up a bit. I, yeah. A little bit hard of hearing. Okay. <laughs> I, I, have a, um, I have a question on the funding of the, the CLG. You mentioned that um, 80 million uh, in cash and 30 million in SPH shares will be uh, transferred over to sort of give them that sort of uh, startup capital for the first three to four years of its formation. And after that, you know, they're sort of uh, going off on their own and then they can seek their own funding, and one of them is government funding, right? So uh, I would like to ask, um, uh, with uh, possible government funding going into this uh, CLG, uh, how would this new um, entity um, sort of uh, preserve its um, sort of uh, separation from uh, the government? And I mean, people have always uh, said that the... Um, the publications in Singapore, uh, you know, they use the term state media to, to describe us. So with this move and if the government really funds the CLG, would it essentially be really state media this time? Yeah, thank you. Okay. I, I think that's a fair question and uh, there may be this uh, perception and I, I want to address this concern. Uh, uh, SPH Media, since its inception, you know, has always uh, strived to serve Singaporean audience and also those who read us from overseas uh, in an objective, accurate, and responsible manner. Uh, and I, I believe that over the 37 odd years or so, they have achieved this uh, mission of uh, serving the public, the news uh, consuming public, and earning their trust and confidence. Trust, confidence, and also respect as a reliable source of news and information. And these uh, values are deeply embedded. You can say it's the DNA of SPH media. And these are values that will also be ported over to the CLG so that they will clearly be charged with the mission to preserve this level of responsible, objective, and uh, accurate journalism. Uh, and that really embodies the concept of quality journalism. Okay? And I think this is something that the CLG will pay great attention to 
this, they will obviously receive public private funding in the process, uh, but they will not stray from the mission to maintain the credibility, trustworthiness and respect of the media by the Singapore public. So I'm quite confident that uh, despite some perception otherwise, that SPH Media in its new home will continue to uphold the values that have brought it to this level of respect and trust by its readers or online audience. Oh, sorry, I think <laughs> this gentleman bid you to it just now. Could you please? Uh, I will, I'll call you. Would you please? Hi, uh, this is Abhishek from Bloomberg News. I would like to know what is the plan for the residual business now that media business would be spin off into a not for profit entity. What are the goals for the residual property business? What are your goals there? And this was a strategic review of all businesses. So what have you found in the main leg of business now? And also last year, I think there was a lot of fair value loss on property side. Are we end of that cycle or are we looking at another fair value loss in that segment? Okay. Maybe I'll ask CEO to address this question. Huh? Yeah, Chun, would you like to do that? The strategy review that we announced uh, encompasses the entire group and for which the the current uh, today's announcement uh, forms the first step, right? Assuming that the uh, shareholder agrees to this uh, proposal, then I think uh, there will be a need uh, for uh, for the group right, to to uh, refine its strategy for the rest uh, of the business. So the strategy review process uh, continues. Uh, as to the, the your question about the fair value uh, uh, losses last year. Uh, I think the, the fair value loss is, is a reflection of the financial uh, circumstances uh, in the midst of uh, COVID-19. And I cannot comment uh, on whether there will be further uh, adjustment. I mean, fair value assessment is, is, a, is a continuous process. And I think, the, the, I think the, the, as long as operating performance of the assets uh, 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 improves, in fact, you, you, know, uh, yeah, you don't anticipate. Uh, any any adjustments, and in fact, I think uh, if, if things improve, uh, we might actually allow for right back. So I, I cannot make any forward-looking view, but uh, if you look at our first half uh, announcement, I think uh, the the operating performance of uh, of uh, those assets uh, have been improving as COVID improves, situation improves. Right? But uh, who who can know? All right, I think we just gone back to uh, phase two, so it's something that's beyond our control. But I think the the what. Uh, uh, I what I can say is that the operating asset, the performance have been, uh, have been, has been improving. Thank you. Yes, please. Sorry about that just now. Yeah, your turn now. Could you take off your mask and help me? Good morning. Yeah, I'm Hui Min from CNA Digital. I have two questions. Uh, just now you mentioned that the revenue from CLG will now uh, be channeled into uh, uh, the new constitution of the company with new uh, goals, right? So what might these be? Does it mean that uh, the media business will now pivot to uh, emphasize editorial integrity, for example, ahead of uh, adv advertiser interests? That's one. Okay, second uh, question is, um, this move comes after uh, various corporate initiatives to improve the sustainability of the media business is it fair to say that these initiatives have failed? And if so, where does the responsibility lie? Thank you. Can I just ask you to... Okay, so, uh, Chairman, the first one is that the revenue is uh, going to the new constitutions of the, revenue, uh, of the company. So I think the main question is, will we emphasize uh, editorial integrity ahead of advertising uh, you know, uh, as, as, as part of this move? The next one is uh, corporate initiatives right, that we have done in the past. I think she's probably referring to all the retrenchment that has taken place. Uh, are we considering those as uh, field initiatives? Yeah. I, in a sense, I have addressed your first concern about whether the editorial policy will be ahead of advertising interest. I think I'm sure all media do struggle with this, but I am quite confident that what has upheld uh, editorial uh, integrity for SPH media over all these years will continue. There will be no 
difference that the uh, editorial integrity will take its precedence, you see. Uh, and I'm confident that under the CLG, this will be what I call the DNA of SPH media, will still be there and it will manifest itself, you see. Uh, and rightly so, because edi editorial integrity uh, will have to come ahead of a pure financial consideration. Uh, and in a sense, that is why we are now having to make this restructuring, because faced with uh, market pressure and the uh, change in consumer uh, habits, uh, uh, or rather uh, media consumption habits by our consumers, uh, uh, one could say that you could change the whole approach to our media titles and uh, make them, uh, you know, uh, perhaps uh, more acceptable to what you think, you know, will sell. But that would do damage to the media capabilities that we spend so much effort and resources to build up over the years, you see, if we take that kind of approach, you see. We, we, we believe that we still have this public information provider duty to uphold and we want to maintain the standard and I believe that uh, and we, well, we have been doing so all these years and I believe that going forward under the CLG they will also want to uphold this editorial integrity. Your second point about whether past uh, right sizing or retrenchment exercise are seen as uh, failures in, in terms of uh, corporate cost reduction, no I don't think so. I think it is necessary because as the media industry uh, evolve and the uh, competition increase in certain areas, uh, we obviously have to make adjustment. i give you an example. In the past, uh, classified ad was a very important part, a very important revenue earner for SPH media uh, with very high margin. But you all know, classified advertisement or classified ads in today's context with uh, digital media, with a uh, digital platform, has uh, been severely affected by the digital competitors. So obviously we have to right size. We cannot maintain the same operation in classified ad that we used to do six years ago. You know? When we still had substantial classified ad, today we have a smaller outfit running classified, but able to meet the demands of the, those who want to advertise and do it productively. And so likewise with sales, likewise with our backroom support, we need to make those adjustments. They are not failures in the sense, uh, they are adjustments to the different uh, industry condi conditions. And uh, because we make those adjustments, as I said in my main statement, we freed up resources to reinvest in other areas. A very important areas like digital technology, digital talent, new content creation capabilities, we were able to direct resources to places. And if we have not done that, SPH Media will be in a worse situation today than it is. Okay? So by doing that, we gave it greater resiliency to fight the digital competitors. Okay? And uh, I believe that it was the right thing. We all believe it was the right thing to make those uh, the right sizing exercise and to redirect resources to important emerging areas. Uh, but as Yakchun said, you know, we have come to a point where there's a limit to right sizing. And the last thing we want to do is to right size ourselves out of the newsroom. Uh, that is not, that's a non-starter. We want to ensure that the newsroom preserves its capability, uh, has the core competency, and has the resources required to discharge its responsibility as a major media uh, service provider in Singapore. So we have to look for other alternatives. And restructuring is one of these, is the, what I said, you know, the most the best and the most appropriate solution for this difficult situation. Chairman, if I may, yes. if I may just uh, interject, uh, I, I, I honestly I, I take umbrage at your first question. There are reporters from here who receive substantial uh, uh, funding from various sources, and I don't believe 
that you will describe yourself as bowing to the needs of advertisers in doing your job. So I think that, please, okay, I, I, I would say, at least for SPH Provin, you know, we have always we have always had advertising, and we have never never conceded and uh, to the needs of uh, of the advertisers. All right, so we have always continued to provide fair, reliable, credible reporting. So in in reporting the answer to this, I, I will tell you first that the the question, the fact that they had a question SPH title for 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 in your words, huh, conceding to the worst advertiser, I take umbrage in the comment because I don't believe that uh, even where you come from, you, you concede, all right? In doing your job, you do not concede to the needs of advertisers. So I, I, I must call this out. Because Jack, chairman is a gentleman. I'm not. SPH, the purpose of doing this is to make sure that SPH Media will continue to do the job we have done so well for so long. Thank you, Jamie. Thanks. Yes, please. Uh, morning. Uh, Chin Hui from ST here. I just wanted to, uh, I hope that you can share a little bit more about the decision-making process. How did uh, you reach the conclusion that the CLG is the best way to go? Were there other alternatives that were quite feasible that were also considered? And ultimately, uh, was the board in quite unanimous uh, agreement in terms of you know, today's announcement? Hmm. Yeah. I think it would be quite difficult to give you a blow-by-blow -blow account of the process. But what was quite clear to the board was that there are some options which normal con uh, operating or normal commercial companies can consider that are not possible or not accessible for SPH media. Uh, I did mention in my opening statement that, you know, there is, of course, in a normal company, you can always consider winding up a loss-making business within the group. But uh, we all know that uh, SPH media functions as an important public information provider, which I have said many times. Uh, that to consider that option is a non-starter. Okay? Then we also, of course, have this uh, in a normal, in a company uh, where there is a vibrant existing competition, they can always consider selling or you know, merging the loss-making business with somebody else. Okay? But uh, in the context of Singapore, where media competition is already quite limited, uh, we also felt that in the interest of preserving media diversity and ensuring that our customers have access to uh, alternative viewpoints and uh, you know, presentation and interpretation of how events can in fact or in impact on us, uh, that we should try to, uh, that, that this uh, sale or merger option is not one that we would want to adopt. And uh, I think at the end of the day, the board was quite unanimous in concluding that uh, restructuring and uh, transferring the SPH media eventually to a company limited by guarantee is in fact and indeed the best and the most appropriate option for the interests of all our stakeholders. All our stakeholders. Not, it's it's a, a balanced outcome for all our stakeholders. And our stakeholders, as I said, are our readers, our customers who read our news and uh, information uh, content, our shareholders who have invested with us, uh, our employees who deliver the content and work feverishly to uh, ensure that they produce timely uh, contents for the customers, and of course, our advertisers who are also our client and uh, business partners. So we have to balance sometimes conflicting uh, expectations among the stakeholders. Uh, and uh, this outcome that we are proposing is, in the opinion of the board, the most appropriate because it has a balanced uh, result for everybody. 
Yeah, Chen, do you want to say something else? No. no okay. Uh, morning, Chairman. Lee Kang from Zapa Business. Following up on the question of shareholders. Usually when companies divest or do spin-off, the shareholders get something in return. In this case, SPH is actually pumping resources and funds and property into SPH media holdings. Mm -hmm. Could you better ex explain to us how this makes economic sense to the shareholders, especially um, they invest in this company because they probably interested in media company, media business in the first place. So in terms of um, expected financial performance improvement, what are we expecting? And second question, for the remaining of the list co, is there going to be a change in name? I mean, people are saying be, no, SPH will be Singapore Property Holdings instead. Thank you. I think that's, that's a very valid question also, that uh, here you are restructuring and uh, transferring the media business into a not-for-profit company limited by guarantee, and you are actually capitalizing the company. So why are you doing that? Why are we doing that? The answer is because the alternative to uh, ensuring that the, the transfer entity, SPH Media, has a reasonable chance of uh, succeeding uh, in this new uh, structure um, is that uh, it will remain part of SPH LISCO. That's the alternative. It will remain as part of SPH LISCO and we are operating as business as usual. And then, as I said in my earlier response and in my remarks, it will mean that all the issues, all the difficulty faced by SPH Media will impact adversely on the financial performance of SPH listed company. So, for the shareholders of SPH, this restructuring with the capitalization of the CLG, or rather the capitalization of the newly incorporated whole co, which will be transferred to the CLG, is a way for them to uh, reduce the drag and the burden on the listed company. And hopefully, over time, uh, the, the remaining company, the list co, will be able to explore new opportunities, new investments, and create better value for shareholders, and also unlock values for shareholders to benefit, you see. Uh, so I think this is a balanced outcome in the sense that uh, shareholders also should understand that all the assets and uh, well-being of SPH, the group as it is today, came about from the media operation of past years. You see. It is only in recent years that media suffered a decline. Previous years, for most of its 37 years, media was the main contributor. So it's not wrong in that sense to ensure that if we are restructuring uh, media, that media should receive uh, startup grants from the parent company to ensure that it can you know, uh, take off into the future. Yes, that's a, yeah, the list goes name change. Um, I said in my statement that the transfer includes all the intellectual property of the SP, of SPH Media, which will obviously include all the titles, all the mass heads, and also the name SBH, Singapore Press Holding Limited. Uh, so you may ask, why do you want to transfer the name over? Why don't you keep the name? Well, uh, we see it this way. Singapore Press Holding is a name that reflects the principal business of the company when it was founded in 1984 and has been so for most of its 37 years. And uh, with this restructuring, the LISCO will no longer be engaged in media business at all. It will become a property holding company. Okay? Uh, so it does not make sense to try to retain the name Singapore Press Holding in the remaining listed company. On the other hand, the new HOCO and with shareholders approval transfer to the CLG, they will become the operational entity for the media business. They will be fully committed in carrying out the media business for the in the future. And so the name is far more appropriate for them than it is for the remaining listed company. 
And that's why we will transfer the name to the, to the whole code. Of course, that leaves us with the, another question, uh, which you haven't asked yet, that what is the name of the remaining company? Uh, my answer is that, that we still have time to think about that. We will seek shareholders' approval in due course uh, when, we need to, when we come to the stage of having a new name. Can I address the question of why, why, why is this in, is the interest of shareholders? I think, uh, I think uh, given where we are today, given the, the, the declining revenue trend all right, and, and a relatively the scope for further cost cuts, I think we, we say that we expect the losses that we have seen uh, in the middle business uh, today to continue for, for, at least, uh, for at least in the next uh, immediate future. All right? and in fact, I think we expect uh, perhaps uh, given where COVID is, uh, some of the losses to widen. All right? So what we are offering to the shareholders is, you know, and this uncertainty about the financial performance of the, the media business for the next uh, couple of years is going to be uh, overhang, it's going to be cast a, a cloud over the, the overall performance of the SPH uh, 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 shares. So I think what we are offering uh, for shareholders is a one-time impact, but we remove this uncertainty. And also, uh, in doing so, uh, if the government uh, agrees, and we, they've signaled that they have agreed to lift the, 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 the restrictions of MPPA uh, from the company, then I think the, the, the shareholders, together with shareholders, we can now uh, look at how we can uh, uh, restructure the shareholding structures and the capital base to be able to pursue uh, new directions uh, for the rest of the non-media business. Okay, so that's the, really the, the, the what is in it for the shareholders, all right? Removing the uncertainty of the, the uh, possible continual losses with a one-time impact, okay? And then we can, uh, we, and then also I think with the, with the new flexibility of, uh, offered with the lifting of the, the, the restrictions on MPPA, and that's where I think uh, we, we believe that this is a, this is a deal that, uh, uh, the, uh, that is good for, the, for the, the interest of the shareholders. Please. Good morning. This is uh, Chen Hing from Zhao Bao. Uh, my question is, so with the formation of the CLG, what will be the relationship between SPH Listed Co. and SPH Media moving forwards? Uh, what are the ties that will remain? And also, with the transfer of the print centre and news centre, where will the remaining business function from? Thank you. Okay, I need him to... Uh... Okay, so, okay, so, so, so it's very, very muffled. Uh, so, Chairman, I think uh, um, with the transfer to CLG, I think what's the future relationship between SPH and CLG? going forward and I think the next question is on NC and PC uh, I also didn't quite catch that <laughs> where, where? sorry let me repeat myself <laughs> give me a second so my question is once CLG is formed what will be the relationship between SPH listed co and SPH media moving forward will, uh, what are the ties that will remain and also with the transfer of the new centre and print centre where will the remaining business function from with the formation of uh, CLG, what will be the um, ongoing relationship between SPH and the media core that is going to be formed? So that's, that's one question. Second question is with uh, NC and PC passing on to the CLG, where will be the remaining business be operating from? Um, what's the relationship between SPH and the uh new media hoco for the time being the media hoco is a wholly owned subsidiary of sph until such time as it's transferred across to the clg once it's transferred across to clg it's no longer part of the sph uh, operation you come entirely under the clg's uh, management and supervision okay uh, at the for the moment uh, the clg has yet to be formed, but in due course, it will be formed at the right time. Huh? And then uh, we will consider uh, if we are invited you know, to be a member of the CLG. But as I said earlier on, we, are not, we will not be making any additional financial commitment for the CLG, uh, even if we should become a member of the CLG. Uh, on once we transfer the physical assets, you know, uh, new centre and print centre, where will the remaining company uh, operate from? 
I think uh, that is a second order issue that we will come to once we have shareholders approval. Uh, then we will think about that. And uh, I don't think that is an issue uh, or a major challenge to find a suitable uh, location for us to operate from. Okay? Yes. Perhaps okay. this can be uh, one or two last questions. We will yeah. need to wrap up soon. I'm afraid we have to end this because uh, my colleagues also have other people to brief in the, in the, pro in the course of this morning. So we will end after this one. Yes, please. Um, thank you so much. This is Janice from today. I just want to ask, I mean, uh, you guys have mentioned, sorry, you guys have mentioned earlier that um, all the staff currently and SPH media will be moving to the CLG, right? Um, there's uh, limited scope to cut down costs even further. I'm wondering though, once the CLG is formed, um, will there be um, sort of wage cuts that the staff may face? Or, and because now it's no longer a, prof, a profit making uh, entity, it's non-profit, so um, will it be like, uh, maybe they won't see any bonuses as, as we typically would see in a profit-making company. So just trying to understand whether the, the staff would face uh, this kind of uh, uh, wage-related changes. Thank you. Okay, this is a long question, very uh, well articulated, but the answer is here very short. And that is that I really cannot speak for the CLG. Huh? Because the idea of this restructuring is that the CLG will now operate independently on its own and we inject the media assets and they will have to run it. And I can't speak for the CLG. But nevertheless, I want to say that uh, the intention in this restructuring exercise is to continue to, is to ensure that the media capability within SPH media is in no way you know, disadvantaged, in no way uh, undermined uh, by the transfer. And the uh, CLG is uh, fully aware of this uh, intention and is fully uh, cognizant of the fact that uh, they have now taken on the, the responsibility of caring for this China bowl and that they will then you know, continue to nurture and to strengthen this precious uh, in legacy rather than uh, undermine it whether it's by you know, cutting Right, further right sizing, retrenchment, or wage adjustment, you know, uh, they would have to be very careful in trying in ensuring that the media capability is in no way uh, adversely affected as a result of this transfer. Oh, okay, one last question. Yeah, one last question, please. Um, this is Claudia from the Business Times. Thank you for taking my question. Um, so um, I just wanted to ask, um, with the restructuring, with the successful re restructuring, um, um, the company will essentially become a property-focused um, business, right? So um, may I ask, what is the potential for for the company as a list code? And what 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 would be the shareholder value that will be unlocked um, based on the current property environment? And a second question is, um, given that the move is still subject to shareholder approval, um, is there a backup plan if it doesn't get approved eventually? Thank you. Can you transcribe it for me? Yeah, okay. So um, after restructuring, right, um, um, it is uh, the remaining part of SPH is going to be a property-focused business. So she's asking what is the potential then as a disco then, what, is, what sort of value will be unlocked? And I think the second question is um, if at the EGM, right, um, the, the vote fails, I think the first question uh, you know, should, should be for CEO. And uh, you know, if, if, uh, if the shareholders uh, uh, vote against it, what is our backup plan? I asked the action to address the first part of the question. Okay, Yakshan? I, I think the, the, uh, after the after the restructuring, and I think you, you, you're right in the sense that the, the, what's left in SPH will be uh, a portfolio of uh, businesses in the retail commercial and then the student combination aged care. And, and also, we also have an uh, interesting uh, digital portfolio of, uh, of, of investment. All right? uh, 
I, I think the, the market will be able to uh, uh, better value these assets once the overhang uh, and uncertainty of, uh, of the performance of the media company has been removed. All right? So I think on that basis, I think we, we believe it is, it is good for, for share, shareholders. All right? Uh, on to the second uh, second question. Well, I think the we 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 will come. Uh, it, I think if the shareholder reject this move, uh, which uh, you know, I think uh, it, uh, it is hypothetical question. All right, so I don't I, I don't answer hypothetical question. Uh, so we will, we, will, we will come to the point when when we come to the bridge. Uh, we will cross the bridge when when they come to it. But I'm emphasize that we believe that this this uh, this. Uh, this proposal under the circumstances is the best outcome uh, for all the stakeholders, all right, uh, including our, our shareholders. Although it's hypothetical and the CEO declined to give you a specific response, uh, I will hazard a form of response in that, similar to what I said earlier on in response to another question, which is that the we believe this is the best and the most appropriate uh, option uh, for all stakeholders, and we certainly uh, would urge shareholders to support this restructuring proposal. But if for any reason it cannot be uh, accomplished, uh, shareholder approval cannot be obtained, then uh, the fallback plan obviously is that SPH will carry on. What it has been doing with the media as an integral part of the business. Uh, and with all the consequences, some negative, maybe some positive, along with it. Yeah. But this, and in a hypothetical question, a hypothetical answer in that sense. Okay, okay thank you very much for thank coming. You. Thank you, Dr. I Lee. I hope we try to answer all your questions and, uh, as best as we can. Thank you.